Earlier this morning, in fact, just a few short hours ago, Linus Torvalds, the king of Linux, has merged a code change into the Linux kernel, enabling full real-time support for Linux, which is an absolutely massive deal for a lot of people and means absolutely nothing for everybody else. But it's fascinating and interesting, and I wanted to walk you through exactly what this is, exactly how it happened, and exactly what it means to you. First of all, the code change in, in question. Here is the message that is included with that from Linus himself. Quote, enable preempt RT on supported architectures. After 20 years of development, we finally reached the point to enable preempt RT support in the mainline kernel. All prerequisites are merged, so enable it on the supported architectures ARM64, RISC-V, and x86, both 32 and 64 bit. All right, all right, so what exactly is the preempt RT? Because that's what we're talking about here. This does not mean, first of all, that Linux is faster. This does not make Linux faster for, for most tasks. In fact, in some ways, this makes Linux slower in some ways when running the real-time kernel. What this really means is that Linux, when it's in real-time mode, when you have a real-time preempted version of Linux, you can have extreme levels of predictability when interrupting other processes in order to perform a high priority process, right? So what that really means is that now when you have a preempted build of the Linux kernel, which is now mainline that has preempt RT, real time preemption, there is a reliable maximum response time. So whenever a process needs processing time, right? Whether it's a, you know, user land process or something inside the kernel, doesn't matter. It says, you know, hey, hey, kernel, give me some time. I need, I need, I need to execute now. And we've already got levels of priority within Linux. You know, you have high priority and low priority, and you can change the priority of a given process for most processes at pretty much any time. But there's multiple types of preemption, meaning when higher level processes get the time and when the lower level processes are suspended or have to go on the back burner. There's standard preemption, there's voluntary preemption, and now there's real-time preemption. And real-time preemption, essentially what it does is it sets a baseline and says, this is the maximum amount of, of reliable response time so that when software is being developed for a particular application, you can rely on a certain level of latency, right? So a, a piece of software that just really requires immediate attention, whether it's uh, uh, medical equipment, uh, precision robotics, uh, audio and video production and recording are, are a big one, at least for me, uh, automotive, self-driving automotive stuff, navigation, uh, climate systems, those sorts of things, things that require immediate, very, very reliable, extreme low latency, they they have that now in the preempted version of the Linux kernel. As an example, just to give you an example of how this could be used. Let's say hypothetically you've got you've got a Tesla, right? And you're driving your Tesla along, and for some reason, the entire Tesla, every system is controlled by one Linux computer. Let's just hypothetically say that, right? One Linux computer. I don't know why they would do that, but but let's let's say that they're doing that. So everything in your car, your your headlights, your music and radio, your podcast listening, your climate control system, your maps and GPS and your self-driving functionality, all controlled by the same computer in your car. And you're driving along, you're cruising down a country highway and all of a sudden you're listening to your tunes. But this this deer jumps out of the forest and jumps right in front of your car. Now, your car is in self-driving mode it obviously the most important thing it needs to do right now is find a way to not not hit that deer and swerve off the side of the road and into a ditch and and, and crash all over the place right what it's doing with your podcast playing or maybe changes to your climate control system that can wait a few milliseconds <laughs> right? We, we can, we can pause your music for just 15 milliseconds to let the car figure out how to not hit the deer, kill the deer, kill you, wreck your car and kill the other people in the oncoming traffic, right? So you want your Linux kernel running this system to say, oh, hang on, Haas, 
everything goes to that. Everything goes to that self-driving functionality. It needs to preempt everything else, right? So that high priority gets to take the take take charge of your entire system from those other tasks. And it needs to be able to do it reliably with a, a very max set maximum threshold of so many microseconds, right? It has to be crazy, crazy fast. And again, this is useful, not just for your self-driving Tesla, but like audio. Audio in Linux has come a very, very long way. Even with the standard mainline branch of the Linux kernel, you can do good, good quality audio and video recording on a Linux machine. However, with a real-time Linux kernel, you can get far more reliable latency, which means that it's much easier to sync up multiple audio sources and multiple video sources uh, and, and get them much closer, which means a whole lot less work after the fact. You get better recordings. It's just better across the board. And again, you can see how this sort of functionality would be incredibly useful for uh, uh, biometric monitors, like monitoring uh, heart rate and blood pressure and, and everything else when you're in a hospital and surgical equipment and everything, you need to know that it's going to have a maximum response time. So that's where the Linux real-time kernel comes in. Um, now, this has been in the works for, let's see... Um, Oh, about 20 years now, a little more than 20 years. It started in its current form, the Linux RT side of things in September on September 20th. So exactly 20 years ago of 20 of 2004. So exactly 20 years ago today. However, that project of Linux RT that started 20 years ago really was pulling together code that had been in development for several years at that point. So this this development really kicked off back in the 1990s, and we're just now seeing it in the mainline Linux kernel, which is wild. So that begs the question, what on earth took it so long if it started development in the 1990s and really kicked off in its current incarnation in 2004? Why 20 years after that do we see it merged into the mainline Linux kernel? Well, uh, the the uh, I'm going to be pull this pull this up here for those watching the video version. The real reason for this delay, and there were many minor reasons and political reasons for the delay, but the real core of it was something called print K. <laughs> <laughs> and any any kernel developer knows what print K is. It's it's a logging. It's a debugging tool. It's basically printf, but uh, a C function of printf, but it's for um, a kernel level uh, debugging. So uh, it prints messages during you know as you're in your in your kernel code and prints them out to a log. So it makes it easier for debugging. That's what it is. But the thing is. Print K forces itself to get priority when it is called, right? That's how it makes it useful for debugging. It, it basically it interjects itself in front of any and all other processes. And uh, and so when it because it does that, it can introduce a wide variety of delays. And so you can see how that sort of thing isn't going to is going to be a problem with a real-time Linux kernel because a real-time Linux kernel needs to minimize the amount of code that exists within the kernel that can preempt other things, right? We, we, we need as much as possible to be allowed to be preempted to whatever task is set to be the highest priority. That's, that's what makes real-time work. And so print K, which was written by Linus Torvalds himself back when like the earliest versions of Linux, like we're talking back uh, 1991 or 1992. I mean, this is this is like pre Linux 1.0 stuff here. Linus is very uh, attached to this particular function. And so it took many years to reach a compromise on how to handle that within print K. They finally did that. Let's see, I'm going to pull up this message here. On Friday, September 6th, um, a guy named Sebastian uh, Seawear uh, posted this following thing uh, to, uh, to the Linux kernel mailing list. 
The print K bits required for preempt RT are sitting in Linux Next. This was the last known roadblock for preempt RT. The RTQ has additionally uh, blah, 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 blah. So uh, with the pre print K bits merged, preempt RT could be enabled on x68, x86, ARM64, and RISC V. These three architectures merged required changes over the years, leaving me in a position where I have no essential changes in the queue that would affect them. ARM and PowerPC have a few essential patches left. Left. We do not have real time on ARM yet. Um, and I lost track of MIPS. <laughs> So we don't have a, a, a real time on MIPS or PowerPC. Um, but so now we have that that print K has been updated. So Linux RT is good to go. This is actually this is a, it's a pretty, pretty exciting deal. Now, this was announced last night and this is great this is absolutely great so the linux plumbers conference is going on their yearly gathering of of linux kernel developers and whatnot and linus torvalds himself had requested that when the real-time code was ready to be merged that it be delivered to him wrapped in gold and a ribbon and all that so what did they do well it's ready so they, they in person they printed out the code changes wrapped it in gold paper and and a, and a little purple ribbon around it and presented him this this the code the code change at the plumber's conference uh here's one picture of it if you're watching the video version uh here's uh a developer bowing down to linus handing him the gold code changes and and here it is from uh from another angle as well and so uh it was it was it was handed to him physically last night and of course the official merge was was already waiting and linus this morning on september 20th merged that sucker on in now what does this mean really for you well, the reality is most Linux distributions are not going to be using a real-time version of the Linux kernel. The, the fact is the, the Linux RT version of the kernel has existed for years uh, and you could get you could have builds of of arch and debian and and many other linux distributions that use the real-time version of the linux kernel it wasn't mainline at that point but it was available in fact many embedded systems medical devices and, and audio equipment do already use the real-time version of the Linux kernel. In fact, I, I used to develop a uh, an audio processing box for a company I worked for long ago that used a one of the earlier, much earlier, real-time version of the Linux kernel. It was not mainline, and that caused some issues, and it caused a lot of companies to be a little bit hesitant to adopt the real-time kernel, but it's been around and functioning and really battle-tested for, for, for many years. So that means if you're running Ubuntu or Fedora or, or Debian or whatnot, you're probably not going to be running a real-time Linux. <laughs> you're just probably not going to. You probably wouldn't need to. And even if you had it, you're probably not going to see any benefit when, when using your games or, or even your regular web browsing or, or whatnot applications. Because real-time Linux doesn't give you necessarily faster on average performance. It just guarantees that when you're preempting a task, you have a maximum amount of latency, a maximum wait time before that preemption occurs for high priority tasks, right? And you can see that that, that doesn't necessarily lead to an overall faster system. In fact, it could lead theoretically to sometimes certain tasks appearing to be slower, in fact, possibly even being slower. So uh, while real-time Linux is critical i mean it was a an incredibly critical thing for a wide variety of uses and, and in fact on my video production machines i'm more than likely uh if i were to set up a new let's say debian or ubuntu or fedora whatever video production audio production box i probably would be using the real-time version of the linux kernel that is now available when uh when we have uh, linux kernel 6.12 but if I've got a gaming machine, I'm probably not going to use the real-time Linux kernel, right? It, it's just not going to be beneficial for that task. It's just, there's just not a lot of benefit there. In fact, I might get slightly, very slightly, but slightly worse performance out of it.
So there you go. There you have it. Uh, Real-time Linux is now a thing. Uh, people will start using it, hopefully a little bit more regularly in the areas when it's useful, in certain embedded devices and medical and robotics and and uh, in audio video processing and, and, and a wide variety of things along those lines. But if you're just an average desktop Linux user, even someone who does audio and video editing, unless you're doing a lot of real-time capture and encoding and a, from a lot of sources, you're probably not going to need a real-time version of the kernel. But it's just the same. It's cool that it's now in there, and it's kind of cool that they wrapped it in gold and a ribbon. I, I kind of think that all major kernel patches should be wrapped up in scrolls and like delivered by Raven. I just let's let's go old school like that now. I think that's that's a good way to go. Uh, anyway, thank you to all the subscribers of the Lunduke Journal, Lunduke.com, Lunduke.locals.com. I could not do what I do without you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes. Across the intertubes, I do declare, end broadcast.